from uh, Safe Schools Alliance, Tanya Carter. Over to you. For those who don't know Safe Schools Alliance and what we do, um, we are a grassroots UK group that concentrates on upholding existing safeguarding frameworks in schools. And we concentrate on ensuring that schools are working with the correct interpretation of the Equality Act. We are mainly working with English legislation. When we're asked about the situation in Wales, we generally direct people to Met Cymru. And I really hope that I've said that correctly and that no one Welsh is dying quietly in the audience. For Scotland, we direct women to SOX Scotland, which is a fairly new group that have just been set up to um, defend safeguarding in Scottish schools. And there's also Four Women Scotland, who are a long-standing group. We also speak to various women in Ireland, in both um, the Republic and the Northern I and Northern Ireland. We speak to women such as Kerry Black and her wife Lauren and Tracy Dempsey, who I've spotted in the chat here. Our philosophy on global child safeguarding is that we take the view that was expressed by Vashnavi Sunder at Philia. And again, I hope I've said Vashnavi's um, name correctly. And if I haven't, again, apologies. When we heard her speak in 2021, she said that the best thing that we can do in this country to help women in other countries is to hold the line here. She said, you have got to hold the line here on the rights of women and girls, on the rights to single sex spaces, single sex toilets, because we have to remember that they were, that was the first right we won in this country and it helped us get all our other rights. We won the right to single sex toilets and that enabled us to participate in public life and move forward. So we must hold the line here so that women in other countries have a system that they can point to and they can aspire to. We believe that it is absolutely essential that we all hold the line globally that under 18s are children. They're not young adults, they're not young people, under 18s are children because this is what gives them rights to protection in international law children's rights globally to be protected by adults. They are enshrined in the 1989 Convention on the Rights of the Child. This is the most rapidly and widely ratified international human rights treaty in history. The convention changed the way that children are viewed and treated. That is, we now treat them as human beings with a distinct set of rights instead of as passive objects of care and charity. We believe that the age of consent for marriage and sexual intercourse for both heterosexuals and homosexuals should be 18 globally. We must be absolutely clear that nobody should be having sex with children and that under 18s should all be entitled to free education provided by the state, regardless of their sex. We are absolutely clear that children who are themselves already parents must never be shamed or stigmatised. They must be supported by society in their role as parents so that they may safeguard their own children as others fulfil their their responsibility to safeguard them. We are absolutely clear at Safe Schools Alliance when we talk about children's rights, that we are talking about their rights to be protected, about their right to a childhood free from harm, their right to live with and be protected by their own parents, especially their mother, unless it is proven detrimental to their health or welfare, at which point, the state has a duty to intervene. The United Nations um, Charter on the Rights of the Child is absolutely clear that children should not be separated from their parents unless one or both parents are abusive or neglectful or their home environment is unsafe. Excuse me. We are extremely concerned when groups and individuals talk about children's rights in the context of bodily autonomy or giving consent. Whether this is deliberate or inadvertent, 
it undermines child safeguarding. And from the point of view of protecting children, it really doesn't matter whether people are intending to harm children or not. Any loopholes in safeguarding must be identified and closed. Those who do not understand that cannot be involved in any way in writing legislation that affects children. We need to be absolutely clear that children are not adults. It is recognised in keeping children safe in education. And that is one of our main safeguarding documents in this country. And in that document, it recognises that adults who do not understand that children are different to adults pose a potential risk to children. This is an important part of safer recruitment. The safer recruitment and DBS checks were introduced in this country and added to our existing safeguarding legislation following the Bishard inquiry. The Bishard inquiry was an inquiry into the deaths of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman at the hands of Ian Huntley. Huntley was a school caretaker at a school and it was a feature of his employment as a caretaker that pertinent information had been discarded under the guise of protecting his rights under data protection. So this is a very important point that if safeguarding had been prioritised rather than anyone saying, oh yes, but what about Ian Huntley's rights? Ian Huntley's rights under the Data Protection Act and not passing on concerns which um, were unproven. If safeguarding had been prioritised, Ian Huntley would never have been working as a caretaker in a school. The other, the other report that fed into safer recruitment was the Warner report. And that was a report into abuse in children's care homes, like in Islington. And Julie Bindle recently wrote about some of the background to this for the cricket, for the critic magazine. And in that she says, in 1980s London, one council decided that as gay men are oppressed, they must all be good. And the results of this were catastrophic. And what she means by that is that children were harmed and abused because people either felt too scared to raise concerns or they raised concerns and they were dismissed as homophobic. So that was one of the catastrophic harms that children were abused. The other catastrophic harm, of course, is the detrimental effect that had on the gay community themselves and how it contributed to them all being smeared as child abusers in an already homophobic environment that was panicking over AIDS. And again, all the stuff that Julie Bindle wrote about in this article, this is all taught about on safer recruitment training. And anybody who didn't already know what Julie has just written about and understand the implications of it, um, able to take the learning from those previous failings and apply them to what's going on today. Anyone who doesn't have that depth of understanding, they have absolutely no business whatsoever being involved in making decisions about the safety, welfare, and education of children. It is essential that those charged with the protection of children don't just chant the mantras that we're all taught on child protection training, such as think the unthinkable, and you never know anyone well enough to say they couldn't, wouldn't, or didn't. You actually need to understand them. You actually need to apply them. You need to apply them to your own lives. You really need to understand that those mantras apply to your friends, your families, your colleagues. They even apply to your intimate partners. And you must understand that other people have to apply that to you too. And it's not personal. That's what safeguarding is. And people really need to understand that it does happen. And every successful predator has friends and family who would swear in a court of law that he wouldn't do that, 
no matter how much evidence is provided. Upholding important laws around safeguarding demands constant vigilance. Child safeguarding is the responsibility of every single adult on this planet. And though, while it is the responsibility of every single adult, the primary sources of safeguarding in a child's life are that child's parents. All mothers have parental responsibility from the moment of a child's birth. Fathers who are married to the mother or named on the birth certificate also have parental responsibility. Parental responsibility in this country can only be revoked by a court. Parental responsibility in the UK means that your most important roles are to provide a home for your child and to protect and maintain your child. You are also responsible for disciplining the child. And of course, this doesn't mean um, corporal punishment. This means things like um, ensuring the child gets up in the morning, goes to school, or if you're home educating, completes their education at home, does their homework, goes to bed at night, leaves a healthy lifestyle. You're responsible for choosing and providing the child's education. You're responsible for agreeing for the child's medical treatment. You're responsible for naming the child and agreeing to any change of name. And these responsibilities are very important when we're looking at some of what's going on in schools in the UK at the moment. You are responsible for looking after your child's property. So we say that when school staff encourage and include with, chil include with children in keeping secrets from their parents, this not only undermines parental responsibility, but it is a separation of the child from their family, which is not in the spirit of the UN Convention. Safe Schools Alliance has always adhered strictly to both the spirit and the letter of the law with regards to safeguarding. Nothing trumps safeguarding. We will always uphold safeguarding children's rights when interpret interpreted correctly and parental responsibility above all else. We adhere to safer recruitment standards when deciding who to work with and which campaigns to support. Our values, our strategy and our reputation at Safe Schools Alliance is all underpinned by child safeguarding. This means that we tend to work alone so that we can remain absolutely focused on child safeguarding. We have occasionally worked on joint campaigns or signed joint letters, but generally we work alone so that we can remain absolutely focused on child safeguarding and that goal cannot be undermined. This does then leave us with largely just me delivering the message publicly, and it does mean I am somewhat overworked. However, there are lots of absolutely amazing women working quietly in the background at Safe Schools and Lions, and we should never ever forget them or what they have contributed to protecting children in this country because they've all done an absolutely amazing job. And without all of them behind me, I would never be, I would never be here speaking to you. I would never have been in front of the Women's Inequality um, Committee speaking up on behalf of all of us. Um, of course, this does also mean that we differ from some other groups in some detail, but we never air these differences either in the media or online. Because we adhere to child safeguarding principles above all else, that is the principle we apply to who we will work with. So we do speak to those such as Victor at the UN recently, who we disagree with. We do not screen groups or individuals on the basis of their religion, their politics, or whether they do or don't claim to be feminist. Indeed, we believe doing so would be a breach of the Equality Act. We merely screen on whether we think they or their attitudes pose any potential risk to children. We always prioritise children. Nobody has a right to work with children. 
Because of this, we are sometimes characterised as being right wing or coming from a religious perspective, neither of which is true, but that doesn't stop some of the media stereotyping us. It's lazy journalism and we constantly battle with this. Our media advisor tells TV and radio producers, if you think you're booking Mary Whitehouse, you're not. Because we understand safeguarding, we recognise insults such as prudes, bigots, pearl clutchers, Nazis and fascists for the tired and predictable silencing techniques that they are. And we ignore them, and you should too. We also encounter people who think they have a different view on safeguarding to us, and we should agree to disagree. No, that's not going to happen. They simply do not understand safeguarding. Those publicly exposing their insufficient understanding of safeguarding like this are merely advertising both their own and their organisation's susceptibility to grooming. We would absolutely beg people to stop saying that child safeguarding is right wing and to stop arguing to undermine it in the name of the left, gay rights or feminism. In England, a proud part, part of what, what is now referred to as Turf Island, we are making some progress with the government, but it is slow going. Um, as Bernadette said, when she introduced me, we recently got to talk to Parliament. We, ugh, sorry, I've completely lost where I am now. But as Bernadette said, when she introduced me, um, I've recently appeared um, at the Women in Quality Select Committee on the review of RSE materials. And we have finally secured that because of our group and lots of other groups. And we, we are doing quite well here now. Safe Schools frequently speaks to parliamentarians and we frequently get quoted in print media. And also now I'm getting more opportunities on TV and radio. And we hear a lot of common sense talked about safeguarding and a lot of MPs and peers in different political parties do really have a commitment now to upholding child safeguarding. But similarly, as we did see in the Women's and Equalities Select Committee, we are still dealing with far too many who really don't seem to have a grasp on safeguarding or material reality. So while it's good that we have managed to secure this view, and I really would encourage everyone to watch it online if you are able to, it has taken us many years of unpaid work and lobbying by different groups and individuals to get us this far. And like I say, if you watch the video, it is absolutely incredible to see elected representatives several years behind where they should be um, wheeling out tired old tropes about section 28. You can see on Twitter the rage that this has provoked in those who lived through the AIDS crisis and fought hard against section 28. And I just find it, Kate Osborne, she's a lesbian. I'm straight and I find it amazing that it's me there um, trying to explain to her that children who will grow up to be lesbian and gay are not being properly supported in schools these days. Why on earth has she not engaged with many of the lesbian and gay groups that are making the exact same point? Both who you will hear from next. Why is Kate Osborne not met with LGB Alliance? Why has she not met with le lesbian Labour? They're women in her own party. Why has she not met with the Gay Men's Network? There are loads of people who she could speak to who know so much more about how this all impacts on gay rights than I do. People who were there fighting against Section 28 with her. And as I said in that session, and it has been widely reported in the press, the right wing conservative government in this country has overseen the worst medical child safeguarding and lobbying scandal this country has ever seen. And rather than do their job 
and hold the government to account, the left-wing Labour opposition has instead in attacked and defamed whistleblowers and tried to silence them. And they have been aided and abetted in this by the left-wing media. The only people who have held this utterly shambolic administration to account have been their own backbenchers. A few brave opposition MPs, the Lords, members of the public, and the few celebrities, such as J.K. Rowling, who are prepared to endure the rape and death, death wrecks and the cancellation. Keir Starmer's Labour has been missing in action, ignoring his own grassroots members. So thanks to those few brave individuals, we are now having a public conversation. We will now be talking about how unfettered access to hardcore porn and being groomed into gender identity ideology online harms children. We will be holding those schools that are not scrutinising materials used in sex education classes to account. We will be insisting that the UN doesn't throw out its responsibility to ensure every child deserves freedom from abuse. Children should be free from harmful work, drugs, sexual abuse, human trafficking, corporal punishment, emotional and psychological abuse, harmful detention, war, and, a, and any other forms of exploitation. And we are going to insist that the UN upholds this and that they don't just throw it all away for glitter and rainbows and ARCAS funding. We have left our report on the shocking similarities between the ideology expressed by PI, WHO and UNESCO with Victor. And we've also sent it to Reem. And we will be chasing this up because we do want to meet with them and discuss further what is going on with child safeguarding globally. So I'm often asked, what, what can you do? People say, what can we personally do? Well, stand up, be counted, fulfill the responsibility you share with every other adult on this planet to safeguard children. Hold your local school to account. Hold your elected representatives to account. If you live in a democracy, you exercise your rights. You owe it to all those who don't. You owe it to our mothers. You owe it to our grandmothers and our foremothers. If you have any rights at all, you owe it to those who fought for them, who died for them to exercise them. You owe it to your daughters and your granddaughters. You owe it to those girls in Afghanistan denied an education. You owe it to every child on this planet. If you're in the UK, you can check out our website Go to resources and we have put the Equality Act and the child legislation, child safeguarding legislation into easy to understand fact sheets on our websites. And there's lots of template le letters there. And we've really broken it down so it's very easy for parents and teachers to understand. You do not need to be a lawyer. If you are running a school, you need to understand what your actual legal responsibilities are not what some lobby group has told you the law is, because if something goes wrong and a child is harmed on your watch, it will be you who is responsible, not the person who gave you the incorrect information. It will be you, the leaders at that school. And school leaders really do need to understand this now and they need to take action now so that in another three years time, they are not giving evidence at a public inquiry, making themselves look every bit as ridiculous and out of touch as Kate Osborne just did. If you're not in the UK, look at our website for inspiration. Combine talents with other women in your country and you build a website that works for you and your country.